Uh, today I want to talk about the circular motion forces. Let's see what a circular motion is. A circular motion is, an, uh, is a motion or the movement of the objects moving on a circular path, on a rounded path, and along the uh, circumference of a circle. Circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is gained by 2 pi r. So here, it means that the distance that the object that travels on a circle, it equals to the circumference of that circle. So don't forget, if you ask uh, about the uh, distance paved in the circular motion, you should calculate the circumference of that circle. So here is the center of the rotation as I have written and I have shown to you. And this shape and this diagram, the rotation is anticlockwise. And um, on the next spot, uh, you can see that the velocity vector is uh, um, always uh, constantly changing its direction. As you can see, some, uh, here it is downward, uh, here it is to the right, upwards, and to the left. So in the circular motion, the velocity vector is changing its, uh, constantly its direction. It undergoes acceleration by a centripetal force in the direction towards center of the rotation. So the acceleration vector here is uh, actually directing to the center of the rotation. It is all of them pointing inside of the circle towards the center of rotation. The next thing is that based on the Newton second law, so if objects based on the Newton second law, if the objects are experiencing a, an acceleration, they also must be experiencing a net force. Here, the net force is in the same direction as the direction of the acceleration. How is it? It is towards the center of the circle. In order for the, uh, for the objects to move on the circle, on the circular path, they, there should be an unbalanced force acting on that uh, object. So uh, we can conclude that an unbalanced force is needed to move on a circle. So how actually I deduce this? I, I concluded this actual sentence because I refer to the Newton's first law of the motion. The objects are moving uh, with the same speed, or moving and tend to stay on, in the motion with the same direction, the same speed, uh, unless an, uh, a force, um, an unbalanced force, on, the, on them uh, change their direction on the side. So here, if you see that an object is constant, constantly changing, uh, rotating on a circular path, and its velocity also changing its velocity vector, changing its direction. So it means that an unbalanced force here is up, uh, applying force on the uh, on the object, or an, an unbalanced force is here is interfering. To summarize. Um, movement of the objects along the circle, cir a circle or a circumference of a circle is called as a circular motion. And the other thing is that the velocity vector is always constantly changing its direction to the up, down, right, and left. As you can see, uh, is a tangent. It's moving on a tangent of the circle. And uh, there is an acceleration also force. Uh, acceleration that its direction is towards the center of the circle. Uh, the other thing is that based on the Newton's second law, uh, we have that if the, an object is experiencing uh, an acceleration, it should also experience a net force. Here the net force direction is the same as the direction of the acceleration vector here. It means that towards the center. Another thing is that an unbalanced force is needed to uh, keep the objects moving on a circular uh, path. Let's know about some of the equations that may be needed to do some calculations in the uh, circular motion forces uh, questions. If you are interested to know how to answer 
some of the questions that are related to this chapter, um, come with me to see the next part of this video. Now, let's see uh, what are the equations that are needed to know in order to calculate the, um, the net force on a circular uh, path, uh, motion of the circular motion, and also to calculate the average speed of the object, sorry, uh, to the acceleration of the objects. So, the first thing I, uh, you have to know, and I have talked about it before, is about a distance. A distance paved by an object on a circular motion is equal to the circumference of the circle. So, if you want to find it, it's uh, equal to 2 pi r. Um, 2 times 3.14 times r is radius of the uh, circle here. The radius is from the center to one side of the uh, circle. Now here, the average speed. How to calculate the work of the average speed is by using this formula. It can be d over time, if d is distance, t is time. Or, if you don't have distance as time, but uh, the radius of the circle is given to you and the period, you can calculate the average speed by using this formula. Average speed equals to 2 times pi times r divided by t or period. So, in this equation, the t is period, referring to the period, P, pi is 3.14, R it means radius, T is time, and D is distance. <clears throat> acceleration, how to calculate acceleration of the objects? Um, you can find it by uh, V squared over R, or 4 times PS, pi squared times R divided by uh, T, squared, which is here v, it means velocity, power 2, divided by radius of the circle, or you can use 4 times pi squared, times radius of the circle, of the motion, and t is the period, what you have to, um, times uh, itself, it means t squared, <clears throat> then after that we have the net force, excuse me, we have the net force, the net force here, if you want to find, you have to have the mass of the object, you have to have the radius of the object, and after that you have to know the period or time. So, um, it is mass times 4 times pi squared times r divided by t squared. So don't forget, t is period, time taken for the objects uh, to turn one around the um, circular path. Uh, net force also can be calculated by this formula if you have velocity, you have radius, and you have mass of the object. Mass times v squared divided by r, or the radius. Now let's um, answer some of the questions actually regarding this chapter and uh, to know how actually this um, equation, all this equation can be used to work out the answer of the questions. Okay, now let's uh, have a look at one of the examples. Um, in this example, it says that a car is turning around a circle and the, um, with this kind of their properties, I mean, the mass of the car is 900 kg, and the velocity is given as 10 meter per second, and the radius of the circle that the car is moving around the path is 25 meters. Actually, um, the units are not needed to be converted because they are actually what it should be. I um, mean, the mass should be in kg, um, or kilograms, velocity meter per second, and uh, the radius also in meter is given. So no need to do any other uh, changing of the uh, converting the units. So what you have to do is to first find the acceleration and then find the net force acting upon the 
car. What you have to do is this. You know at, um, what the equations needed at this part and for the circular motion. What you have to do is first you have to write down, you jot down whatever are given or whatever is given in the question. We know about it. And then you have to write about those things that we do not know or it is asking you to uh, find it. So what you know is the mass, is the velocity, is the radius of the circle. So the mass of the object, the velocity of the motion, and the radius of the path or the circular path. And what it is asked you to find is the acceleration and the net force. What are the formulas that uh, we already know? One of them is the, for the speed. For the speed, we do not need to use it at all because here it's not as if the speed is given here, the velocity. So the other one is the acceleration. I have to know which one is useful here at this question. What is given to me is mass, velocity, and radius. So I can use this equation, A equals to velocity squared over radius. This one, because the time or the period is not given, you should not use or cannot use it. So this one is useful. I bring it here. And I write acceleration equals to V squared over radius. It is equal to, what is the velocity? 10. 10 times 10 becomes 100, divided by mass of, ma, divided by radius, which is 25, which is equal to, if you work out the answer, do the math, you get 4 meter per second squared, because that's the unit of the acceleration. And at the next part, you have to find the uh, net force of the, on the object. So, um, you can use this formula. Net force equals to mass times four times uh, pi squared times radius over time. Time is not given, so this one cannot be used. You can use this one. This the other uh, equation, which is mass times velocity squared over radius. But because we have done that one before, and this one is referring to the uh, acceleration, so we directly can use this equation which is the formula equals to uh, force, the net force equals to m times acceleration, or mass times acceleration. You bring it here, force equals to mass times acceleration of the object. It is 900 times 4 equals to 3,600 newtons. Doesn't matter, you can use the other equation, but the answer would be the same because v squared over r is uh, the acceleration that we have actually um, did it before, so when you wanted to find acceleration. So uh, if I, I can write m times uh, v squared over r, but you have to redo everything again. So when you know the acceleration, you can directly put it into the equation. So the answer would be Acceleration is 4 meter per second squared, and the net force is 3,600 newtons on the car of the object. Now, let's see another example for this section. Now, we have another example here. Let's see, have a look at the second example. Our car again is making a turn around a path, which is a portion of a circle, like here. And its radius is 12 meters. And from here to here, if I claim this word, it's from here to here is 12 meters. The radius of the path that the object or the car is moving on is 12 meters. If the turn, the path that it is moving on, is a quarter of the circle, it means from here to here only. A quarter of the circle, which is made in 2.1 second. The time taken to move a quarter of the circle is 2, 1 point second, the time taken. And the, the whole path or the distance is how much? The distance of the path is 
Gain the correct answer. 